Uh, I'm truly, and I'm going to choose the word uh, this morning correctly, humbled. I think because sometimes we get proud and, proud and high mighty. So I'm humble this morning what we have achieved as a church and where we've come, okay? Um, we've done some amazing things. We've done some really amazing things. If you look on the, on the list that we give you on the, on the uh, notices, we've done a lot in a short time, in five months. It's been amazing, and God has truly blessed us. And you know, it's been through God's grace. Humble grace. We must always remember those things. God has done these things with us as a church. He's established us, and he's stabilized us. Yeah? Those things God has done in this church has stabilized you and he's brought you to a place and established you this morning. But now we need to know more what God wants for us to do. He's stabilized us. He's got us to where he wants us. But now he wants us to know what he wants this church to do. Okay? That's important this morning. And I want us to look at Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. I have struggled to get this, but praise God, the Lord is gracious and he gives us things. And it comes through prayer. And this is what the Lord wants you to know this morning. Habakkuk 2, verse 2. It is Micah, Hosea, Hosea or Micah, Daniel, just after Daniel, a couple of books after Daniel. Habakkuk, the prophet, lived in a time of great distress. This is what God spoke to him as he sought the Lord. He he's really sought the Lord for vision. And chapter 2, verse 2. The Lord answered me. After much prayer this is, and much soul search, and much crying out to God. The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, or write the vision down, and make it plain on tablets, so that he may run who hears it, or reads it, or one translation says, a herald may go with it that understands it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. So what am I talking about this morning? Vision. Okay, the church needs vision. And first of all, that verse, I want to split it up. And it says, first of all, you could say 2A, it says, write the vision down. Okay, write it down. So let me just define vision for you spiritually, first of all, spiritually speaking. In Proverbs 29, verse 18, it says, where there's no vision, what does it say? The people perish. Yeah? Where there's no vision, the people perish. Basically, there's no word from the Lord. There's no clear vision. There's no clear leading from what God is saying. And the people throw off restraint, it says, basically. And they do what they want. And they get on with things. So there's no clear vision. And actually the context of that is speaking to the country in Proverbs. To Israel. Without vision, God was saying, Israel, you're just going to drift. Without my word, without my direction, you're just going to get on with your own things. So vision from God is important into the assembly. And into the assembly of the saints. And it's important that you and I get hold of it. Otherwise, we will drift. You know, I always think of Britain, UK today. The word of God is receding and the country is just going down the pan quickly. It's lost its vision of God. It's lost the word of God. And our country is quickly going. Sad. It also is a word for the church. If we don't have vision from God, if we don't have political vision in the country, the country gets in a mess. Yeah? If we don't have vision in the church, we drift. Well, God wants us to have vision as an assembly here in Cheadle. Unique and blessed to take that vision on. Do you agree with that this morning? Yeah. Let me put what the Message Bible says. I don't like the message, but sometimes the Message Bible puts things very simply. It says this, If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend... To what he reveals, they are most blessed. That is from Proverbs, Proverbs 29. When we see what God is doing, when we understand what God is saying to us, we are happy. We know where we're going. We know what we're doing. Let me just elaborate and touch on this a bit more. Samuel is a great book. 
And 1 Samuel 3, 1 says this, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord, before Eli. And in those days, the word of the Lord was read. There were no visions from God. The word of the Lord had stopped. And the country was impoverished. The country had lost the vision of God. The blessing of God, his word, was stopped. And the country was in a mess. It says at the end of, uh, I think it's um, Judges, that every man did what he thought was right in his own eyes. And the country became uh, in a terrible mess. You read through Judges. Awful time. The country had lost the vision of God. And in those days, here Samuel is born. Right in the middle of this lack of vision. And it's God's provision. And this Samuel is born through prayer of Hannah, his mother. In that time, she has no children. And she, you know the story, she's desperate. And so she prays earnestly and God gives her graciously a son whom she offers back to the Lord. And so here the scripture takes it up. Samuel grows in the presence of the Lord. And he's being trained. And he's under the watchful eye of Eli. Now he has bad press, doesn't he, Eli? But he was under the watchful eye of this man of God who taught him. And I like to think that you guys are growing up under the word of God, being nurtured under the watchful eye of your leadership. And God is training you and blessing you for purpose. You're not just here just to get on with life. We're here for a purpose and a vision that God has for this church. And you've got to get it into your spirit and into your heart this morning. There is vision. And I will come to that in a little bit, what God has said for the church. Now, this boy grew up in the presence of the Lord. And I'm so glad that you young people are growing up in the presence of the Lord. Yes, the world's out there. It's a massive place. It has drawing upon us and we, 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 we get contaminated very often. But you're here, like this young boy Samuel, in the presence of the Lord, being instructed and encouraged and built up in faith. Yes? And so he was mightily used in the future when God decided to use him and brought the time around. And God will bring the time around for you to use you in this generation because you're born out of prayer you're born out of what God is doing and what God wants to do in Cheadle and Utoxeter and in the surrounding, surrounding villages and areas Amen Yes, there's a great big church out there but God has plans for this assembly and what he wants to do each church has a vision has to have a vision we need a vision and so he grew up and Habakkuk was in the same time lack of vision Lack of the word of God, a dryness, an emptiness. The people had rejected God, put him aside and got on with their own things. And then there was barrenness and emptiness, something just missing. God isn't there. And that's a horrible place to be in your life, isn't it? When there's no spirituality and the world's taking you over and there's just death and, 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 and there's something missing in your life. But here this morning, we have the word of God to encourage you, to lift you up. And here... Habakkuk cries and prays to God and God says, right, listen to me. Here's the vision. And God speaks to the prophet and says, as we read in verse 2, he says, write the vision down. Make it clear and make it plain. Okay? I'm just going to write that down for you this morning. It's in a blue one. And We're looking this morning at vision. Yeah? Can you see that? Vision. Vision for the church. Vision for us this morning. God says, write it down. So that's what we're doing. We're making it plain to the church this morning what God is saying to us, to you. And I think that should be exciting because there are many churches out there that have no vision, that have no desire, that have no goal. They just come week in, week out and attend church and they think that's it. But thank God this morning, God is speaking into this church and says, I've got plans for you. I want to use you greatly in the community and use you greatly in the generation in which you live because you carry my word because you're nurtured up in me and I want to envision you and use you hallelujah Amen. I should catch your spirit this morning I know there's a fight on in the heavenlies because of what's happening tonight yeah but the word of the Lord is going forth to you under this umbrella of a spiritual battle and that's what you're feeling this morning the oppression 
That which is pressing down is a spiritual battle, and that's a good sign that we're moving in God. Yeah? And so, be encouraged. And so, I, I, I put down under that scripture, write it down, write the vision down, make plans and make it clear, strategic planning. Now, I'm not very good at spelling, and I can see Christine with eyes behind me, cringing. She is. Strategic planning. So we've got vision. Yeah? You can't see it? Oh, good grief, you blind lot. Under that is strategic planning. Okay? Just take my word for it. That's what it says. So we've got the vision and the strategic... Now, this strategic planning there, it defines what we're doing. It gives us our goal. Okay? This is a business plan. A spiritual business plan. Okay? It's our road map. It takes us towards the goal, the high vision that God has got this morning for us. Yeah? Yeah, do you understand that now? You with me? Strategic planning. Let me tell you something of our activities that's on the internet. Right? We have this written down on the Charity Commission, and it's the statement, and it reads like this. You can go on the internet, put Cheadle New Life Centre in, and see what we are saying as a church. We are saying this. For the public benefit to advance the Christian faith in such parts of the UK and the world as we see fit. We are doing that. Amen. Yeah? We sent a big lorry to Romania the other, the other week. There is great vision in Romania, and we are a part of that. We actually bore that out. From this, within this group of people. That vision came into Romania. And the vision came back to us and we formed as a church. Fantastic when you look at it. How God has done that. How to selling rubbish. And taking rubbish. And selling it. And building a massive complex in Romania from nothing. And taking the gospel out into the villages and towns. Now God has said, right, it's your turn in England. And has put vision back into us and we formed as a church. And so we have that mandate. Now we have a practical vision. And it is biblical. That statement, that commission statement is biblical. Yeah? Let me tell you how it's biblical. Our mandate is to advance the Christian faith. Our commission and mandate is there. But it comes from the Bible. Matthew 28, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptizing, making members of my church, building them up, bringing them in. And that's what we've got to do. And I believe that's what we are doing. Okay? Within the practical call, we have the practical vision. The carrying out of that mandate. I talked about a boat last week. And that boat, if it's static on the seashore, that rudder can't work. If we want guidance from God within the vision, the boat has to move. Yeah? It has to move out and then the rudder moves the boat. As we move out on the mandate for what God wants, that rudder kicks in. God guides us and leads us to what he wants us to do. So we are moving as a church and not sitting static, yeah? Within the practical vision is a supernatural vision, yeah? We've got the practical mandate, we're doing it from the Bible. But there is a supernatural vision that comes into every assembly if the assembly is listening, Right? God puts a supernatural vision within the church. He gives it to each church. And we have got one this morning. The vision, listen, listen to me. The vision that God gives us is beyond what we can comprehend. When God gives you vision, it isn't that you can do it. He gives you vision and it blows your mind. Right? You think, how can we do that? Are we just dreaming? As Anne said, a stitch in nine saves nine. Am I just going through this? No, God puts the vision into you, into the church, that we just think we can't do that. He tests your faith. He tells us where he wants us to be in the future. He tells us way back here that we work towards what he wants. Many churches get the vision and stay here. And do not move towards where God has called and wants them to. We think we've bitten off too much and we think, oh, it's too much. We'll, we'll, we'll just draw back and we'll carry on here. 
but through being practical and moving like that boat, the rudder starts. And we start to move towards what God has called us to. Though we haven't got the mighty faith yet, that will come. Yes? So God moves us. Our job is to make practical steps towards the greater vision that God has put within the church. I'll come to it in a bit. Okay? And uh, so he also said to Habakkuk, make plain so that a herald can take it, read it, and understand it, and run with it. Yeah? That's in the verse 2. And so we've got here, and under that verse 2, I want to put this, number 2. Can you see that? What does that say? Mission. So we've got vision, we've got strategic planning, and within it we've got mission. Yeah? Is it making sense? I hope. We've got mission. The fundamental purposes of the church is God's kingdom. God's kingdom here in Cheadle. God wants us to build it. Okay? Some churches start very small, with just two and three. And the mandate is to build it up, and to build it into more, to pass on, to give in to the church, to build the community up, to build its faith, to equip its people, so that they go out and get more. So God's kingdom builds, it's a light within the community. This church is a light now, within this community. One church is closed, sadly, but thank God he's come round the back door and opened another. You see, you can't outdo God. Because God sees the future. And what he did, he worked it around. One shuts down, one rises up. Because God says, I want a light within this community. And he's drew us in to the church to build you up so that you go to this community and make a difference within it. Yes? To make a difference in Utoxeter, Cheadle, Forsbrook, Blythebridge, all around. Amen. Just a small church, Yes but we have the power of God. Amen. We have the Holy Spirit within us. Amen. We have the mandate, the calling, Christ in us, the hope of glory, to go and do what he's called us to do. Amen. He's commissioned us, he's empowered us, and he wants us to pray, to seek, and to go. We're on about opening a small shop again, up the high street. Why? For the fun of it? No, because we think we can be a witness there, an halfway place for the church and the community. The community won't come into the church, so we go halfway and meet them there. Okay? Part of this mission, the strategic planning and the mission is to get into the community. Yes? That's what I'm trying to get it across. So, we have that inf uh, influence. It's generational. I am trying to pass on what I've learned through 30 years to you. Yeah? And then you will pass on on the next generation to the next generation. There's some younger ones in here that you will influence. Hallelujah. There are future pastors, future leaders, future men of God, future women of God here that will take on when I've gone. There's a whole generation at the old church are going, but I was of the young generation. Now I'm old and I'm moving on, but you are coming up because it's God's will and plan and purpose that the light stays here. Okay? I am so excited by tonight. I am so excited because this is working. It's starting to work. We have a strategy and a mission, and it's working. Remember I talked about something. Let me draw this down. I talked about escalators. Do you choose shops that are inviting when you go? When you go shopping, you ladies, when you go, I know Christine does, if it looks a nice shop, you go in it, don't you? If the clothes are there, it looks clean, it looks nice, it's inviting, you walk in. That's the strategy of the shop. Its mission is to get you in. And when you go in, it's got another idea. Right? What was it? What does the shop have at the top? It's got... It's, everything's at the top. All the, all the um, media and... What was it? Software. Computers. <laughs> I know you can't see. But all the, all, the, all the stuff they want to really sell you, where the money is... And so you walk into the shop, they've got you. What do they do? What's in a shop? Escalator. escalator. So they get you to the first escalator. 
There's an arrow there. There are things that are pointing towards that escalator. Where it is in the shop is where they've planned it. And so you get to the escalator. Oh, they're very good. <laughs> that first escalator takes you up to the next floor. We've had three or four missions in this church. And we are getting people in. And I'm so thrilled that my cousins who are backslidden and away from the Lord for many, many years have never gone to a church, will never go to a church, are all of a sudden come to four meetings and have heard the gospel and are excited and have emailed me and said, I don't want to miss anything. Let me know when you've got the next thing on. The escalator, the mission is working. We've drawn them in. Scott's family has come in. We've never come to a church but are hearing the gospel, seeing our lives, seeing your light. I think that's fantastic. That would never happen normally if we didn't do all this and we didn't do what God wants. Now, we need to believe that God will save them. Yes, yeah? yeah? So that escalator takes them up then to the next floor. And so that's what we're doing. Four times they're coming in and hopefully at one point the penny will drop and they'll come to Jesus and then we've got them to the top. Oh, I'm getting excited. Okay, we should be excited because backsliders are coming to the Lord. Families are coming in. The unsaved are coming in. It's wonderful. You know, this would never normally happen in a church. And so I'm excited. I am believing, and I want you to believe, God for great things. Because there is a future vision that we're working for. And it's all involving you all. And I'm so happy tonight that the ladies are working in this. It isn't just us. The ladies have caught the vision and there's food preparations and there's things happening. You're involved with it. It isn't all just preaching. It all builds to the preaching. It all brings them in to hear the gospel, the mandate that Jesus called us to do. And so we're wisely working with the Lord. Yeah? How did you come to church? How did you come to a church? How did you hear the gospel? How did you get saved? Did God work on you and bring you to a certain place where you heard and came up the escalators and came to the top? And that's what we are doing as a church and we must believe in for great things. It involves your prayer. It involves everything that you need to do. And that's what excites me because I'm involved in God's kingdom. I can involve myself and you can involve yourself more and more and more by doing practical things. And as you do, God will lift you and hire you. And eventually some of you might be up here Amen. And so finally, verse 2 again says, For the vision is for an appointed time. It will come. It will come. Okay? God has given us a mighty vision for the future. We are making steps towards it. We believe in God. And so also, I just want to write down, and within these things are targets. Okay? Targets. Vision, strategy, mission, targets. We've got targets tonight. We've come together. We've formed. A, we've got a character of our own. We know who we are as a church. We know our doctrine. We know what we believe. We are, we are stable. Uh, we have active strategy and mission. We've got that. We are making uh, the call a reality. We're making it effective in the community. God's word is going out. Now God is working with us. Tonight, expect the power of God to be here. If you don't, pray for it. Do something. Get down on your knees or ask God tonight to bless it. To help Scott to preach the gospel. He needs the power of God. He needs your prayers behind him. One of the greatest missions, Billy Graham, got all the churches praying for a year before he came to the area. And when I went forward once in one of those Billy Graham meetings, I could hardly stand up. The power of God was there. Why? Because the whole community prayed for this preaching of the gospel. And it was powerful. And so tonight, if you want to see the power of God and God working, pray for Scott to preach the word. Get behind him and ask God to anoint him. Yeah? We've got backsliders coming in. We've got the unsaved coming in. We've got fresh faces coming in. We've got other family members all of a sudden coming. And they're bringing their family members in. It's unbelievable. This is because God is working with us as we believe him. As we move out, that rudder is working. God is working with us. 
But he wants us to pray. Our targets for the coming year, this year is ending, isn't it? One more thing we've got is the carol service. We've got another escalator to get people to the top. It's the carol service. Pray for it. Have ideas for it. We're a church that encourages you to get involved. We want to see as many people serving the Lord within the church. We've got the young people are taking the service, and we need to pray for that. And I am so excited by that, to see our young people taking a service. That is a joy to my heart, close to my heart, because I started when I was 20. I was given the opportunity. You've got the opportunity. Take it and stand for God and give to the church. And God will bless you. You might be afraid, you might be fearful, but do it and God will bless you. And so our purpose, our target is for the salvation of others. Yeah? It's for the salvation. Oh my, I can't wait to see my cousins to come and get broken by the word. I've seen things change. They would never come near a church. They were brought up brethren and they hated it and they broke away from it and said never go again. But all of a sudden, here they are, coming, loving it because the Spirit of God is with us and he's using us through these simple things. It's, now, we've got next year and we need vision for that to move towards what God has called us to. And let me tell you what God has called us to. The future vision is this. Remember, it's born out of prayer. I'm going to tell you that it was born out of prayer, many years of prayer. Five years ago, God gave us a flash vision before the church was formed. He said, you'll form a church. There's a church formed. This is out of the Romania work. A church is formed. You're here. You're a part of that vision now. It's very hard to plant a church. You go and plant one. If you're not with God, if you're not in God's plan, it won't work. But this is work because God has done it. Because God has said so. And so... The future is this. God gave us a vision, and this vision, born out of prayer, as I say, and he wants to flesh it out as we move forward. It is this, that it's a new build. He's already formed the church, but what he said for the church is a brand new build that incorporates facilities for the whole community, mothers and toddlers, coffee shops. On the side was going to be a place for the, the, the mission work abroad. Fantastic. Now, when we heard that, it just seems pie in the sky, but the church is formed. That's part one. Part two will be the tailor-made community centre building. Okay? We need to believe God for this. The finances, the land, whatever we need. You might be looking at me and thinking, I'm nuts. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you in faith, I'm telling you that this is what God has given. This is vision. A community centre. A coffee shop, a toddler's, mothers and toddlers, to bring in the families, to be a community hub, for us to be the light to affect them. Okay? It's in God's proposed time. Amen. That's what he said, it's going to come. And you need to get hold of it and believe God for it and work with us towards it. As we do move out like the boat, the rudder kicks in and God says, go here, do this, do that. And as we do, he brings them in. And as we move with him in faith, he saves them. One, two, three. And before long, he says, you need a new build. Now's the time. Build it. But we haven't got the money. He says, I know, I've told you because I've told you to do it. And you can't do it because it's vision from me. But as you trust me, I'll do it through you as you believe. Now, that might sound hard, but let me just give you a few quotes to finish with. These are visionary quotes. Vision without execution is hallucination. Thomas Edison. Celebrate what you've accomplished, but raise the bar a little higher each time you succeed. Maya Ham. Determine the thing can be and shall be done, then we shall find a way. Abraham Lincoln. Destiny is not a matter of chance, but of choice. Not something to wish for, but to attain. William Hennings. And finally, Walt Disney. Walt Disney says this, keep moving forward, opening new doors, doing new things, because we are curious, and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. All incorporated within the vision of God, and all incorporated with our faith to push things forward towards what God has called us to. Now, I'm going to leave that with you. 
And I'm going to trust that we've got the vision, the strategy, the mission, the escalators to the top to get people there and the targets. I'm excited by next year. I'm excited by what you will bring to it as you believe God and come to us and say, couldn't we do this? Shall we do that? And be involved with building the kingdom of God. Shall we pray? Father, we just thank you this morning. But Lord, I know one thing, I'm excited. And I'm excited for tonight, and I pray for tonight, and I pray that, Lord, every blessing on it. And may we see the strategy working. May we see, Lord, those who don't know you coming to know you. May we see those that have gone away from you, Lord, coming to you. As Habakkuk said, I will rejoice. Even though things are not happening yet, we will rejoice and praise you, Lord, because you're going to do it. And so, Lord, bless us now as we go, pondering on the vision and the call to this church. In Jesus' name, amen.